Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the greatest show on earth, the Talking Reckless Podcast. It's May the 10th, 2021. I'm Matt Eads, joined by Andy Captain. I thought this was going to be Cavalia. I'm disappointed. I don't know what that is because I'm uncultured, Brendan Lynch. <laughs> It's the it's the act you stole our tagline from. <laughs> uh, is it Cavalia is the great, greatest well, show on earth? I don't see. I that. don't actually know if yeah, that's true, but I know the joke Andy was making. Uh, WrestleMania or something. My name is Matt oh, yeah, Eads. WrestleMania is probably claimed that too. The greatest host on earth. The host with the most. Not the only host. As I say that, you know what? I maybe I can't make that claim. Andrew Captain, also professional broadcasting host. I don't know if the host of this podcast, though. So not the host of this podcast, claim. but you are a host, so I can't yeah, say that not... I am the host with the most. There's a lot yeah, of... You I'm... should say the greatest it's... podcast host. It's... Mm. it's fine. I'm not very good, so don't worry about it. <laughs> don't say that. I've listened... A, doing radio by yourself fucking sucks and is hard. It's, like, way different than, than streaming video games by yourself. Uh, and B, you're fine. Oh, you're thanks, better buddy. than fine. You're Like, when I say you're fine, it's like you just hear you on the radio and you... you... What the fuck? We don't even bat an eye. Sorry, there is a legit. Somebody just did the like two hands in the air. Whoosh, ah, street race start. Oh, that's good. People are fucking that's screaming really cool. outside. You live in a cool neighborhood with cool people, and I'm jealous. Uh, not for much longer. Fuck. How things been? How things been, Andrew? Things have been all right. Yeah. I struggle during the week a lot hey. when I'm not working. Mood, Monday brother. to Friday. It's hey, uh, it's really tough. Yeah. Um, I'm not very good. I know, like, Brad O'Warren was just like, oh, let's play some video games, hang out at the house. Like, it's great. It's the best time ever to do nothing. And I'm like, no, I fucking hate it. Like, it's just not who I am. I need a little okay, I'm going to okay. step in here. <laughs> Literally every fucking day I get home and I want to do anything other than play video games, watch a movie, uh, watch watch some internet stuff this week that we'll get into, and every time it's just Andy and Warren playing video games. Yeah, Andy and Warren playing, and video it's games. always Apex. Send me a message. You coming to play video games today? I was like, you guys ever not play video games? You guys ever just all go to your separate corners? And well, do your own thing. How come, how come Andy that's... and Warren never send me the message? Hey, we're not playing video games, and I just want to make sure you're down to not play video games. Like, what? How it's come been... that one never comes through? No, it's, it's my favorite be... message. Yeah, I like pl- I like <laughs> playing games because I get to hang out with people then and like play with you guys like all fucking day when you guys are at work i don't get to do that so you I and like, i can I like... hang out yeah well we could but that's on video games again yeah it's true we don't have a well soon soon we'll have destiny i guess we don't have a like a common a ground game. game right now oh i don't really i, see. I don't really like apex is the problem mm. did I, you try that new arena mode uh nope i uninstalled apex to install destiny one actually <laughs> i i, Jesus. I that's see. a weird decision <laughs> uh you know i just wanted to see some stuff that I forgot how different Destiny 1 was. It is, like, night and day. You used to level up your armor and unlock, like, trees of perks all the way down. And oh, that was Destiny, a nightmare. The it. tower was that different. Was terrible. Yeah, yeah I wanted cave. to... Uh... Y'all remember the loot cave? Oh, I remember the loot cave. I was fucking born in the loot cave. That's, yeah, that's where I was forged. The loot cave was in the beta, I feel like. I remember grinding it in the beta. I never played the beta. You know me. No beta Brando. Yeah, there, that's, that's known. No beta, no oh. demo. That's right. Take my money. Yeah, I don't know. I installed Destiny 1 just to see what was up. I don't... Well, why do I need to play betas when I have you find folks to play Outriders and tell me not to get it? That's right. I buy the bad games, so you don't have to. <laughs> and boy, did I buy one this week. No, that's uh, that's not true. I bought it last week. <laughs> that's hot. Yeah. I'm going to put my coffee on that take so as that it warms up again. Boom. Got him. <laughs> Uh, where to start this week? This is kind of a weird week. Um, well, well, you know what? We'll just get it out of the way. Uh, this, again, it's weird. It's weird talking about another podcast on this podcast, but, uh, formatively, the podcast we're about to talk about is extremely important to, I think all three of us here are pretty avid listeners Mm -hmm. of Giant Bomb stuff throughout the years. As uh, as we've made no secret of, I usually I don't like to say it. I don't like to say Giant Bomb because if you if someone listens to this show and is like, oh, what's Giant Bomb? And like, why would you ever come back? Why would you ever come back to this? Right. Oh, this knockoff that can't really afford to do it all that great. For, you know, so it's, we just never say it. It's worse than like it's it's way worse than if we were to be like, yeah, there's a sports podcast I, I I really like or this movie podcast I really like. If we start throwing around the words Giant Bomb. 
we're just being like, you want to see something that we do, but done as good as it can be done. Yeah, kind Check of the, these guys out. the uh, it was actually the very first podcast I ever listened to was the Giant Bombcast in Me too. 2000 and it was arrow pointing down when I started 2006, yeah. maybe 2008, like I think. Yeah. All, yes, because Oliver and I were electricians right before Dragon Age. Mm-hmm. Yes, and have been listening weekly pretty much ever since. And um, that's so long. Yeah, there. I got in in two thousand nine, but I went back and listened to that stuff because it was fucking hilarious. Sorry, I just nudged my mic trim. Uh-oh. Hopefully, we're okay there. The, uh, this is the kind of problems you won't find on Giant Bomb. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're bringing them up because they they're not they're not shutting their doors, but they, it's a big big staff turnover. It's kind of Giant Bomb as it used to be is is sort of shutting down. People are leaving mm-hmm. different jobs and whatnot, and and they're making big changes. So we and a lot of the industry are just kind of you know saying our fond farewell to them. Uh, Brando has big rainbow puke right now. That's cool. The <laughs> it's from the nausea from uh hearing that one of my favorite podcasts, my favorite podcast probably of all time is ending. Yeah. So third, third favorite, talking reckless, fourth favorite, talking reckless, rolling reckless, will the weebs. Super Saiyan Pod Super Sane, Six favorite, John Podcast. Yes. I've definitely listened to all those. <laughs> yes. They're super formative. Super, super formative. Those those were the folks who uh Oliver and I listened to and I was like, I bet I could do this. Not only do I think I could do this, I want to do this, and have been chasing it ever since. And uh, you know, and I know a lot of our listeners as well listen to them, or or watch their stuff, old Gerstmann and company. And uh, you know, just just sort of, it's a weird it's a weird thing to a bring up on this podcast and b even like talk about the podcast that I've it's- listened to every week for the last. 20 years or whatever is no longer going to be on the air as it was the, as close as you can get to explaining it. Cause my big, the, one of the hardest parts about this, and it's good that I specifically have a chat with Eads where I've basically only been talking about giant bomb for the last week, but it's that you, when you go out the door, it's not like game of Thrones or, uh, or breaking bad or something where, when you go out the door, you just find the fucking nearest guy and be like, dude, what about game of Thrones and breaking bad? and talk to them for like 20 minutes. It's that you go out and just no one cares. Like, you're just like, who wants to talk about giant bomb with no one, no one wants to talk about giant bomb with you. Uh, but I think that's what made it. So like ours where it was like, this is like my own little corner of the internet where people say, what do you, uh, what, uh, what, what do you, what do you listen to? What are your podcasts? And I'm like, Oh, giant bomb. They're like, Oh, I never heard of that. What is it? And I was like, it's a podcast about video games. And you just don't get any more into it because people's brains are just like, oh, so you don't listen to like Rogan or anything. And I'm like, no, 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 fuck off. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm good there. They yeah. they had such a and, and are still having such an impact on the way that like games are covered now that 99 percent, not only of like what I do and, and people in this space do, but like the entire space now is modeled more or less after the way those guys were doing it. Those guys were doing. You know, two people talking heads on videos, commentating gameplay, as it mm-hmm. was years and years and years before that was a a thing to do. Mm-hmm. Back on Justin TV, yeah, they had their own stuff for a long time. They yep. they used to use their own shitty <laughs> insight stream that never worked. But yeah, yeah it's they're, uh, they're always good too because they kind of branded themselves as you know they always had the non corporate opinions when it came to games. It was mm-hmm. like the raw reviews and. They were never influenced by, you know, sponsorships and things like that as much. And, you know, they kind of just called it as it was for better or for worse in some situations. And well, that was uh, the whole Gerstman Gate thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like they just, you know, they, 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 they never had to dance around anything. Like they were very raw and real with their reviews and stuff. Totally. And they were never, they were never going to, they were never going to steer you wrong or lie to you about how they felt about something. And like they've gone on to inform what I do and do not like <laughs> about the internet where, uh, like if you could, if uh, let's imagine a, uh, a spectrum here on one end of the spectrum, we have imagine a YouTube thumbnail of like a crea- uh, an influencer's face with like a color splash behind it. Go like, and like some dumb the reaction thing. text at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe whatever. That's all the way on one yeah. side. And then kind of talking about video games like we do now as adults and and we're not in it for the shock right we're not we're not making a kids tv show basically all the way on the other side 
you know, giant, giant bomb lands somewhere very far from the YouTube fucking... <laughs> mm -hmm. All that shit that I've just come to absolutely loathe over the years that... It's a race car. Yeah. They, see, they're getting the fuck out of here. They, they know. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's gone to inform uh, a lot of stuff where... Mm -hmm. Our whole, like, even right down to our format is... Yes, yeah. four people. Is, you wouldn't say intentionally ripped off from but certainly we heard the thing that we thought was best and are now doing the thing that we think is best totally and uh, i will say we do release before them which is good yes. because often yep. because we're better because we're better and yep. because because i grew up listening to those guys and and following their their games criticism and stuff we share a lot of the same opinions a lot of the same opinions just show up on both shows and uh, it's good coming out before them because as the small guys, then people can't be like, you're just saying what they're with you. It's very good. Mm -hmm. Now we can go the other way. Jeff yeah, Gershman, stop copying me. I, I didn't like Doom Eternal before you guys didn't like Doom Eternal. Cowards. I liked Doom Eternal <laughs> before surely one of them did. Yeah, no. I don't believe so. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, go and check them out. Giant bomb. It's okay now because it's, it's only Jeff. Who is, don't get me wrong, still very good, but you can't get the you can't get the foursome or the threesome like you have here now. Yeah, well, I think he'll. I will expect him to be bouncing back with a foursome soon. Yeah, we'll see. I wonder. I wonder what they're gonna do because we we talked a little bit about that too. Of like, with the pandemic, you probably don't need to have four people in a physical location in a studio to do this this video coverage of video games anymore. No. And I don't think that'll be it. But I do, it, it sounds, I mean, we don't need to get into the nitty gritty of nah. what Giant Bomb's going to do. Um, but it's not, like the podcast is going on. The Giant Bomb cast itself is not over. The Beast cast um, is. The Beast cast, however, right. is over. More and room for I us. Assume, Another oh, one yep, bites the dust. Releasing on Fridays from now on, talking reckless. We don't need to be the best. We just need to be the last. Mm -hmm. That was what I always um, listened to. I never was a big Bomb cast guy, but I like the Beast cast a lot. Yeah, they were great. It's Vinny. I like Vinny. I hope Vinny Caravella, wherever he is, finds some uh, some much needed rest, some well deserved yes. peace. Sleep, child. Yes, rest um, well. They've done all their wrap up stuff this past week, and it's worth going to uh, check out. But it, uh, if uh, if you're anything like me, it can be very emotional uh, when you have those moments of realization mid laugh where you're like, "Oh God, this is it." Yeah. So they're fucking rapping. They're fucking rapping. Sucks, and that's probably how people felt the first time we fake ended this podcast. Mm -hmm. Enough now about the one, now the now next one. Now that we know what that feels like. yeah. Now that we know what it feels like, we're going to have to never end the podcast again. That's right. The eternal <laughs> battle against entropy. Uh, that's that's probably enough about Giant Bomb. You should go check them out. Sure. They are very, very, very worth your time. And there's like 20 years of, I truly think some of the best video game coverage in the industry. They've had so incredible nice. names in there: Austin Walker, Patrick Klepek. Uh, the only two ben I back. still follow. <laughs> the, the rest, yeah. you know. Yeah. Dan Reichert. Uh, okay, too far. Living legend. Too far. There are some. There are some areas where Jeff and I maybe would take different paths on how we run our podcast. And one, one world you hire Dan Reichert, and the other, maybe you don't. Heather, you make the biggest mistake of your life. Yeah. Well, Dan would him. end up running my podcast out from under me or some shit. He's Fuck pretty man. funny. He's funnier than us, so could happen. Uh, what, um, have we been doing? What, 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 what about Talking Reckless? You guys see the Mortal Kombat movie? You, uh, you seen it? You heard about it? Of this? course I have. I haven't seen it. I'm not shelling up the 30 bucks to rent it, so. It's maybe a little gory. You don't like the gore. It's uh, like cartoony, be, you know, but. We, we always talk about that. I'm kind of at the point now where I can, as long as it's a movie, like, I actually want to see, I'll, I'm, I'm fine. Like, I mean, I've gotten through Game of Thrones and. Oh yeah, this watched isn't nearly of, is. I've watched all of Castlevania and like I've watched enough stuff. If it's something I'm actually interested in, and I can power through. If it starts to bother me, I just turn it off for a little bit and just go drink a Gatorade. There was uh... tell me, Andy, you've overcome the gore. You have not overcome the poor. <laughs> I know the poor is still a problem. I also haven't overcome the gore either. I just have learned to live with it. There's like, a there was, yeah. like sorry sorry to cut like I'll give you an example of one that got me recently um the end of uh, the latest season of the boys uh that got oh, me. Like, that I, got after, all of us yeah yes. but uh, the, yeah so the boys 
constantly raising yes. the bar on what yeah. I feel is the fucking craziest shit I've seen. Yeah, like that was too much. <laughs> as soon as that started happening, I was like, hey, this is so. It, what about yeah. when he's in the whale? When he's in the whale is pretty good. There's something, I don't that, remember. That, that was funny, something though. About like, a face. That, it was funny. Yeah. There's something about uh, like. Road road burn or pavement burn or something in my mind. There's some kind of like pavement burn one that. Are you that... talking about the courthouse? The thing in the courthouse? I that's no, what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's yeah, no, okay. no, no. That maybe. And I, he's did, about the thing in the I remember courthouse. there was one. I should look it up because I had to text. I remember texting somebody like Kyle or something, just being like, "Oh my god!" It was like episode one, season two, I think, right mm-hmm. in the beginning. Was it? Was it when he lasered the crowd? It might be. <laughs> there, that there were so sucks. many in that whole thing. That, that, that season two is that dope. I didn't like that either. That also bugged that me. That one but. got me good too, but I can't remember what it was. It was some real. Oh. I'll look it up. That show I'll was look fucking it up. messed up. Yeah, it was real gory. I remember having to text somebody like, "This is too far." There was a point in Mortal Kombat where, um, I don't think it's spoilery to say you see some fatalities out the game. Mm-hmm. The first time you see a Almost fatality, all of them I was like, maybe. "Oh no! What are we? Too the far?" Kung Lao one. Yeah, <laughs> Kung Lao one is. <laughs> Fucking stupid. Uh, Mortal Kombat, I think, is a really fun movie. Yeah. The... Yeah, I agree. I don't know how much we can get into it, and I've already done a, a segment on it uh, the last time we did a show, but uh, I'm glad to have someone else to talk about that dumb movie with. Yeah, it's fun. And, like, it It was a good thing you didn't answer any of the questions I asked going through yes, that show. Well, cause... you were... You at one point asked me straight up something that happened, yeah. and I'm like, now I'm in that situation where do I say no and lie? I, I kind of have to. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, I, I saw it, it like it's a, like, critically, it's getting a very bad rap, but like, oh, well, yeah, just turn your brain. Off. I don't know. They, they make no bones, they don't even try to explain it. They're just like, I don't know, you get powers, you got a tattoo on your thing, you're chosen, you, you might have powers. That's yeah, how that's powers, how we explain you got to kill the guy who's got powers. Then you get powers. Literally anything that they do in Mortal Kombat is explained by I don't know. Then you got powers. Metal arms, yeah. powers. Fucking frisbee you hat. That, that powers. hat was just balanced. You powers. thought that hat was balanced? No, it's powers. He does the hat it's a magic portal. Hat. He does the hat portal once. You see him the first time. He does the hat portal where he uh, or no, he comes out of it. The hat's on the ground and he like does the yeah. whoop and then just never. We never talk about the fact that mm-hmm. that hat is also a portal. No. Yep. It's fun. It's really fun, and you can see. They they are like they're playing pretty close to the capital L lore, the official lore. You can you can totally mm-hmm. see like they had uh, the amulet makes a makes a appearance in such a way that they know. They know. Do you like the leg sweep thing? The leg sweep thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not Maybe we won't get into yeah, it. Yeah, I'm yeah. not sure what uh, which it's on their training. Um Yes. No, I do remember yeah. that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Kano, top to bottom, is a is a great character. Yeah. The like the f- the very first line he says is really all the way to his end. Very good. That's the tone. Yeah, and you can tell and they're sorry. Go ahead. I, I'm gonna do uh, a a a spoiler by not spoiler. I'm gonna tell you something that doesn't happen. Uh, there is no Mortal Kombat tournament in that fucking movie. We don't get to it. Well. There isn't, nope. but they the the capital T tournament doesn't happen. But they talk about it, like the the little combat. There is are, a tournament. Yeah, we, it feels like we are going towards a tournament. But it, if you want mm. a surefire reason why this is not a standalone movie, it is yeah. because we know a tournament is happening, and we did not get to the tournament. Didn't did, did, didn't we? Doesn't that end? No. Because no. they, they talk about what their you, fights. They just, they just talk about their fights as though they are part of this tournament. They're like, oh, no, we, no, might, we they, need to have they, mortal combat. They tur- no, they talk about the fights as if the other team is coming to kill them before the tournament starts. And then they show That's up. how the whole movie is set up. Yeah. Hmm. So we still have the to tournament see tournament. never happens. Okay, okay. <laughs> the, uh, there's a... I don't think there's. I don't think Quan Chi is in the movie. I'm trying to remember the zombie. Is, is Shang Tsung the one who makes all the zombies? Eventually, or is that Quan Chi? We're gonna get zombies. It's. It seems like in a way, they might very loosely follow the the kind of like one two three reset. Maybe I don't know if they'll do the reset, but the like three Mortal Combats. Right, you tell the arc first. You gotta have the tournament. Then you gotta have the amulet. Then you gotta have the world end and reset or whatever. Kind of seems maybe though, or or have at least they at least have the potential to do it. They have they have yes. laid those seeds. I feel down. like they are not going to follow any game story whatsoever. I think they're going to use the lore. Yeah, but from what I 
read because it's been a long time about those early Mortal Kombat movies, there is very little that is happening the same way. Yeah, I'm trying to. I don't know. They fight. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Okay. Not Mal- wrong. Melina's <laughs> face opens up. I like Melina. I like the Melina design a lot. I yeah, like Melina. she looks this fucking scary as fucking good, shit. Good designs. You can also totally tell the like throwaway characters where they're like, ah, oh, here's this weird harpy lady. <laughs> oh, she she doesn't last long. Like, She's not gonna make it. You can you can totally tell her, you're like, mm, I don't recognize this person. Mm. I wonder how long they're gonna. If you were never on the box, you ain't making yeah. it out of this fight. Um, the uh, the I love the music hits too. Mm. The music hits a couple times during the movie where they're like, it's like action music, and then all of a sudden you hear the <laughs> and you're like, oh shit, that's it. <laughs> the they just they just flat out play that song during the credits, which is dope. Yeah. Uh, what was I gonna? I can't remember now. No, it's gone. Gone. Flawless movie. Fleeting thought. I did you say flawless victory? Because that's actually. Nope, but good. Yeah. The, the first time flawless that's victory. They say stuff out of the game as though it makes yes, sense. Test in your the... might. <laughs> yes. So stupid. Just test, test your, your might. might. <laughs> like, are you talking to me? It's that didn't dumb. make any they sense. They look right at the camera and yeah. wink. The the. Flawless victory was the one. The fatality mm-hmm. flawless victory. I'm like, what the? It made yeah. no sense to say that right now, but all right. It's like you can't, as the person who gets the flawless victory, you can't call it the flawless. Victory. No, Someone and I think that was like, that was like the 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 Kun Lao. That was the one where like fatality. he went way too far. Where I was like, oh, too. What are we doing? Ah. we were just like sparring. There's no too far in Mortal Kombat. Now it's... we're cutting people in half and. Ugh. They're fatalities. Yeah, sorry. Not fatalities. Not yet. Animalities. That's all I have to say about Mortal Kombat. I hope they make more of those. You said too much. Good, good martial arts scenes. They're fun. Sub Zero kind of sucks. The <laughs> there's a part he's where he's fucking OP. He's really scary, but there's like the very first attack he does where he just makes hail come down. And like they just go in a car. Oh, they just go in a car. That's not even very yeah. big hail. If you can just get in a car, you're like, it's huh. like a cat playing with its food. Sub zero, sub zero, no problem. I'm in my SUV. You want to let them know you're there. Like when you're that confident, no, you're like everybody's Let's getting like blown away. This big attack. Like, ah, it's, it's stupid. Throws them through that wall of fucking ice. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Andrew, what have you been playing in regards to video games this week? Just a lot of Apex lately. <laughs> How's that new uh, here? Your favorite game. How's that new mode? New mode's really fun. I love it. It uh, it doesn't feel like uh, like the arena modes that they put in. It's just three on three. Uh, it doesn't feel like they tacked it on there. Like a lot of games usually feel like when they try to put it into something like that. Like with Overwatch, anytime they do another mode, like it was very much so just this thing we just shoehorned into the game uh, for you to dick around with for a little while. Not Whereas the arena mode... Lucille Ball. Yeah, fucking Lucio Law, <laughs> God damn it. Um, but with fucking, like with a, with this arena mode, it feels like it's like a part of the game now. Like it really it fits in there really well. It fits in with the characters, it fits in with all the guns that they have. Like it's not you're not hopping in there and it doesn't feel like you're just fucking around in some sort of experimental sandbox. Like they put some time into this, which I mm. really like. You can yeah, feels the, right and balanced. The, yeah. Uh, the difference in the character meta for for that little three V three space versus the big mm battle royale yeah i'm using uh lifeline way more now uh than i did in the battle royale. well honestly lifeline was like my second used character even in the battle royale but i'm spending most of my games playing lifeline because lifeline your your passive ability uh you get unlimited for the duration of uh (laughs) for the duration of uh the whole match when as like you still operate on the cooldown that the game has but you just always have it and then your tactical ability you have to spend essentially money on between rounds to kind of restock uh so lifeline's passive is the res the re- the little res bot that you can you can set it up and it starts resing the person and then you can just walk away and keep fighting mm-hmm. um and one of the add-ons that you can buy between rounds is the gold backpack uh and the gold backpack means if you res someone it reses them with half health half shields instead of oh. no shields and very little health and i honestly think lifeline is essential it's in that mode now because whenever i've played against it it's a fucking nightmare and i've had many times where like i've even just gone and put it on warren or andy and then instantly got killed 
and they'll just get up and kill them. So, what about Caustic? Anybody playing Caustic? Who uh, he, he lays like poison. Caustic. He lays like poison traps, which aren't always the most useful when you're kind of yeah. moving fast through the battle royale. There's probably a, a almost certainly a uh, Im improved meta for the defensive characters, whether it's Caustic or Gibraltar. Uh, or the electrical girl that I can never remember her name. Horizon. Nope, the other one. Um, Watson. Watson. I knew it was an electrical pun. Because um, you're right. You can realistically, I mean, you can get to the circle quickly in this mode because there are still closing circles, but it's just a much smaller space. Mm. Uh, and you can get to the closing circles quickly and fortify like your life depended on it. How so. many, is it just you and one other team? How many people are in one nope, of these? Just, yep, three on three. And just one one round? There's rounds, right? Because you're like buying, yeah, so, it's like Counter-Strike style. Buying yeah, and weapons between rounds. You're doing, uh, you, you start in round one with not a lot of money to buy. Like if I buy a sniper, I can buy like a sniper and a battery. And that's basically all I can bring into the match. Uh, and then as the rounds go by, you start getting more and more money between rounds to fill out your character. Uh, as well as in like while you're actually fighting on the map during the rounds, you can find the little material canisters that will also give you more uh, resources for the next round. And then you get more resources if you're killing. So um, there are ways to, so, so it is uh, best of three or first to three, I should say mm -hmm. at the start, but you have to win by two. Uh, okay. So, so you could theoretically keep going back and forth and yeah, back and forth and back and forth and back way, and forth. You can go all the way to nine <laughs> and at nine, then it's game uh, shuts down. <laughs> Yeah, then the, yeah, the Xbox person. Mm. Um, no, at, at nine it's just winner take all. So, mm. and you at, if you get to around nine, you have so much materials. Uh, plus, any materials you don't use the next round or the last round carry over. So, they do carry over. So, did, have you ever encountered the what they would call an economy round in, in Counter Strike? Yes. We're not going to buy anything. We're just going to probably lose this round to save up for next mm. round and and get good shit and try to win. Yes, but I feel like the rounds are not. The, ga the total game is not long enough yeah. where I feel like you don't want to lose that first round. Yeah, definitely so, not. Yeah. And I guess if you lose the first round, you have to win the next round. Right. That's really interesting. Uh, no, That's... first to three, not best of three. I think I'm Right, sorry. Right. Sorry. For, uh, no, I th I, first to three is just a weird... I'm not used to thinking it, yeah, of was, first uh, two a threes. Best of five, yeah, I guess, is the way I should have ordered it. Yeah. That's cool. I really... I'm always fascinated when they have like a very different game mode and, and suddenly all these abilities that once maybe seemed useless are you're kind of looking at them through a different lens mm -hmm. guns the mozambique it's the mozambique time to shine you get a mozambique because it it puts you in there with two guns whether you buy guns or not and it's a mozambique and a p2020 um so then if you buy a gun it will replace one of those two guns but they are still not giving the mozambique the respect it deserves it's the greatest gun of all time. basically if you're doing the economy round they're like here's your mozambique go forward young man change my and name win to the day. matt zambique mm -hmm. apex what's the name of that mode arenas uh, arena arena oh it's yeah. just called just called arenas yeah what else andy you all ready for a new season of destiny yeah, as ready as I'll ever be. You got all well, your uh, you... spent my time between that and Apex. I think. Do you have a full? You want to know how hardcore to Destiny I am now? I have a no, full. Qu all right, never mind. I have a full <laughs> quest log of completed bounties, just waiting to turn in, so I can have a big XP boost on day one. I'm ready wow. to go. But I got about. I'm gonna try to get the full forty. Right now, I've got about like twenty five of them. That's but, uh, Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday launches the day after your boy, the podcast release time. Your boy uh, gets his needle on Tuesday. You? It's, my boy, yeah. you? My I got, boy, I got so boy many me. boys. What do you do? Pfizer gang? Uh, they, I, it is one of the M Moderna. NRA ones. Oh, uh, that could be Pfizer or, or Moderna. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know which one yet, but it's one of those two. Dope. Uh, I think you, they uh, sent all the other ones up north. Did you get yours booked, Andy? No, can't do it till tomorrow. It's too young. It's every, oh, right. You're not, a, I'm not even over 30 mm -hmm. yet, suckers. I see chat. That's right. Everybody throw up your... We need like a... What can we... It's like gang sign, but for your, your vax sign. We need like I, a... uh, I, I, I'm I not going to be that guy that complains and says other people shouldn't do it because do whatever you want. But when it comes to talking about what vaccine everybody got, 
uh, especially starting now and in the near future. I'm just going to not get involved in the conversation because I could not give less of a shit of what I get or what anybody else gets. You gotta have the I mean, standard I get... talk. I, I just... am not gonna do it. Like it goes, I it, don't there's care. A, there's a formula. It goes like this. We both ah oh, pandemic been a long time. What vaccine did you get? No. Oh, that one, huh? Weird. And... No side effects for the first one. Side <sighs> effects for the second one. And Anyways, someone, that's every to, conversation for the last to, fucking three months. I had to sit through what every fucking, every person who played uh, that stupid uh, Pokemon ARG, <laughs> Pokemon Go, what fucking team color they were on. For every person I met for a year and a half, I'm fucking telling people what vaccine I got. <laughs> oh, yeah. you, you Pokemon Go, you red? Are you red? We like, should get... F- literally fuck off. We should get chains. We should get bling like I think but, but a- wear it under a shirt and then only when it's time we'll just be like Pfizer gang big big gold Pfizer's diamond studs yeah, yeah. four Andy's months get Canada you, you. <laughs> oh, I can only get it once but I don't think there is any you get no, your uh, second shot four months after the first one in Canada Canada thinks no. it's better than everybody yes it's no uh, you have you have to get it uh, within four months, but they have said right now the way supply is going, you'll get it way before that. Oh, really? They yeah. told me when I got my shot, they told me, don't call us. We'll call you in four months. And I was, well, isn't it three weeks that you're supposed to get the next one? He said, nope, four months. You have Goodbye. to get it inside of four, four months. And then I think one of them is you have to get it, you definitely have to get it a certain amount of time after the first one. Yes, it has to be a minimum yeah. of three weeks. Right. I think, but yes, there's So that. I think it's, yeah. Everybody They've, seems to make up their own rules. We're like, oh, no, you have to get it within three weeks or it's not effective. And like, oh, no, it's four months and it's still fine. And, you yeah. know, no, I think four months we'll is the the doctors say you need to get it inside of four months. Yes. Otherwise, it becomes not effective. But, but also it is not. Alberta has said we have a, even... Alberta has said we the way that stock is going right now, you will be able to get it well inside that window. We so. better. We are number one. In the, that might not still be true. Earlier in the week, we were number one cases. New cases of COVID per million people. We were higher than Argentina, higher than India. Who else is up there? Brazil. We, we, Alberta. Alberta by itself. Only Alberta. Not Canada. Yeah. Just Alberta. Because actually the rest of Canada That's is doing pretty good. Per capita, right? Yeah. Well, per, per million yeah. people. Right. But yeah, it's, it's fucked. Soon. Higher than the U.S.? Yeah, actually, per million people, the U.S. is is doing very well right now. They yeah, started US off the worst vaccinated. and then got the most vaccinations, so. That's well, usually how they go. They usually just don't give a fuck about something bad that's happening, and then they're the first to be able to fix it because of all the money. Capitalism, boys. Mm-hmm. What the fuck are we doing? Yeah, no kidding, right? We're out here trying to care about each other? Yeah, I just the... fucking throw a bunch of people at the problem and not care about their health and whatever and just carry on business as usual and then just come out on the other side of it okay because you just get all the fucking cure immediately yeah i mean here in alberta we're not much better no uh what was i gonna say oh speaking of capitalism uh i sold a uh, an item on it's kijiji is a website we use it's like craigslist or or it's not like it's more like craigslist it's like listings and people contact you privately uh, but was selling something and had the old, um, you ever have somebody send you an e-transfer and it not be instant and take like, this one took half an hour of just me and this dude awkwardly standing across each other in the hallway. Like, yeah, uh, auto deposit. Yep. Oh yeah. Yep. Auto deposit on. He's like, okay, everything looks good here. I'll send you the money, send you the money. And I'm just like, we're just sitting there in the hallway. <laughs> 10 minutes go by. It's also like 50,000 degrees on the fourth floor hallway. Just sweating. Uh, no, actually, I did the opposite. I said, why don't you go wait in your car? I'm going to go back in my place. And when it clears, I'll text you. You can come grab the thing. And uh, that was what we ended up doing. But yeah, stood up there for like 20 minutes. So, like, so. Because none of us, neither of us felt like we could leave. Because he, he had sent the transfer and, uh, and like, didn't have the unit yet. So he didn't feel like he could leave because he already sent the money. And I didn't want to just give him the thing and be like, well, I'm sure it'll clear. There's this uh, this standoff, but yeah. that guy's a scammer. You're like, uh, it should clear faster. It kind of so. The, the fact the fact that it's not clearing fast means he's probably got it set up so he can fucking stop it. I was selling a, a piece of audio equipment, one of the many many mixers I have, and uh, he wanted to make sure it works. I'm like, yeah, no problem, go nuts, do whatever you want. He brought his own little DAW and and plugged it in, and was like, figure, f- playing around with it, and like, I can't get any sound out of it. 
that's weird. I'm, I'm sure this thing works. So flicking around with it, I'm like, oh, weird. No, it's like no sounds coming up. This is fucked. Of course, when the guy comes up to look at it, it magically isn't working. And looked at it, played with it, press all the buttons, and I'm like, ah, this is so strange. Why, why don't you let me take this in, back in the apartment and just I'll hook it up, see if I can figure it out. Whatever. Brought it back inside and unplugged what he had plugged in, and it turned out he had like uh, plugged in the audio in instead of the audio out or whatever from his machine. The thing worked fine. Like plugged a mic in and away it went. But as I'm like oh, figuring this out, I'm like, hmm, is he trying to pull some? Yeah, pull he put in like the USB with the audio yeah. port virus in it to what make it stop to... working temporarily. Or yeah, or like fucking like the poison that you take to make your heart stop for a little while, but then you come back to life. He oh, was yeah. doing that to you. Set it up so it looks like it doesn't work, and then you're like, whoa, so I came all the way. Would you take 200? It seems like it's broken. Matthew, this doesn't work, but I'll take it to the dump for you for free I'll if you want. get rid of that if you want. But it did eventually clear, and 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 away it went. Everyone's but happy? Just bring cash, yo. I've done that, too. I've been on the other side where, like, I thought <laughs> e-transfers were instant, and turns out they're not. But mm. when all the way and I went and got that podcast table, actually, it was when it was. Is that guy still alive? Oliver? Yeah. Uh, not to me. He's not. Oh. I think he moved, maybe? I don't know. I don't know. He, they're moving. Fuck, if I move, are you going to disown me? No, he just... He destroyed my studio, and then he lost a bunch of my equipment that he had oh, for D&D. right. He, he, just, he just misplaced a bunch of equipment. Lost it? Hun hundreds of dollars. is starting his own podcast? I don't know. But, anyways... Took a huge shit and didn't flush on his way out. So, uh, I don't know if they moved or what, but yes, they. I would not expect Oliver to be on this podcast going forward. He's more than welcome. He's been more than welcome, but he, uh, you know, he's got a life. He, he, I think, doesn't really like games anymore, but uh, just filled up the podcast well, to help well, me out, you know. I think it's really us. what it is. Uh, who Among Us, indeed. Anything else, Andrew? No, that's pretty much it. Just waiting on the Destiny stuff. Yeah, and, uh, Tuesday. I mean, fun. I should mention, too, since, you know, I just feel like I got to get as much volume out of me as I possibly can for the show. Um, in regards to Apex stuff, they do have the arena mode, but they also release a new character and a new weapon, uh, which I could talk about a little bit maybe if you want me to. No, I think. Uh, uh, no, I I'm... believe I believe we went over this character last time and you said three factually inaccurate things. Yeah, they were yeah, all wrong. Yeah, actually released. Uh, I, we don't have to talk about it. I, I looked it up and was like, actually, <laughs> you're Nick Cage. Yeah, no, I got what? crossed with the theories. What's the so, new weapon? We I didn't know there was a new weapon. Bow. Oh, oh yeah. Talk about, talk about it. Um, oh, yeah, they, they have a new bow in the game, which is, uh, which is very good. Uh, marksman weapon. And it definitely needs a bit of a nerf on it because... My God, can you destroy guys with that thing? It is better, like it is better than a sniper. By the time if a sniper shoots you and you have a bow, by the time he's got another shot in the barrel, you can have him down. And like, if you get two headshots with it, they're dead. Like, it's ridiculously strong. Is it a... the sound is like fucking nightmare fuel out there right now? It's like, uh, that's the... yeah, and you're and just you like, can... Andy, ah! I'm gonna die. I haven't been hit yet, but I'm gonna die. <laughs> and you cannot trace where it's coming from. Like, it is so fucking hard to figure out where the guy's shooting at you from. I was going to say, can you see them? Are there, like, any kind of an effect on the Hardly. arrow? Or you're just like, well, <laughs> fucking... Yeah, like, it doesn't have no, a... It's, it, it, it's tough. Yeah, it, it, doesn't have a, it doesn't have a shine or anything. If they're looking down sights, nothing. Like, it's fucking really hard to figure out where they're coming from. And well, it's well, even all the other ones had, like, bullet trails that, like, obviously you, you don't see them when you're hit, but if your teammates are in the area, they're usually like, oh, uh, they, I see bullet trails coming from over there. That bow, I'll be looking right at, at Andy, and I'll be like... I don't know, man. Nothing. <laughs> Maybe in that mountain. <laughs> That's cool. Bows. Steal, steal more of Destiny's ideas. Apex. Why don't you put swords in next? Mm -hmm. Why don't you put baby yeah, Destiny. fallen in next? Did you guys see the baby fallen? They're pretty cute. I can't is wait to actually? shoot them with my bow. If the baby fallen is actually cute, I still oh, might they not play. Seem but I will cute. buy the plushie. Yeah, no, the plush. There is a they. They did make a plushie. The plushie is definitely cute. I don't know. They, I think they might be like kind of spider like. I think if you saw one unwrapped, you'd be like, "Ooh, this is a gross little." You know, if have... you saw any baby, trust me, Maddie. Yeah, it's, if you so saw gross. any baby, it's wrong. pretty gross. You're not wrong. Did you know that they have skeletons and exoskeletons? That's crazy. 
Ask Please. me anything about uh, 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 the Elixney <laughs> Fallen. Oh, I see. From Destiny. Yeah, babies. Mm -hmm. I learned a lot about... I've been learning a lot about Destiny. You ask me anything about Destiny. I know it all. I'm... 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 This is tough to say. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going on the journey with you guys. I've... I've already... The, the train left the station, like, months yeah. ago. <laughs> I'm, I'm too yeah. far gone. Like, there's... I have to decide if I want to play Destiny or if I want to play everything else. I and unironically it's... read the lore on weapons now and go, oh, shit, oh, this was going on, huh? Okay. Uh, That's how deep into Destiny I am. Yeah, and that I've is... I've done the thing, and I love the thing. You guys have seen me love the thing, but I know, like, I just know, like, when you're out of it, you can see what's wrong. <laughs> and when you're in it, you can't, and I don't want to go back in it. It's so good over here. I just my plan i just want to and i mean who knows like i get sucked right into it again but i just really want to go through i want to play vault of glass and kind of do vault some of that of stuff ass. but i'm not looking to like when um when it first came out whenever this latest expansion did i like wanted to run the night falls as, on as high of a level as i could get and all that shit and now i just kind of want to see the stuff i just want to see it i want to see vault of glass again i want to see kind of yeah. what they're doing dance around with it for a little while but i'm definitely not like going to be grinding for ascendant shards like i was uh, before. Oh, you should be grinding for Ascendant Shards right now. What do you... If you don't have five shards ready to get all your new raid gear up to, uh... Uh... uh master work. Right now, you're outside of it, Andy. Doesn't you that gotta, sound come back in, fucking buddy. terrible? Come back yeah, in. Yeah, well, that's what I mean, right? Like, as like... soon as you cross the plane, that sounds so good, grinding the Ascendant Shards. Yes, Andy. Yeah. It's I never see. been faster. I might get into it. We'll see, but... Yeah. I now, when I hit the glimmer cap, I know to buy valuable sparrows and or ships, because apparently that's how you save glimmer past the cap. That's how into destiny I am. Is that because it has, like, the lowest or the highest resale? Yeah, yeah, because you can actually, it's like 5,000 glimmer, which is not much, but it is the highest you can put on you one vault like spot. ships? Yep. Well, not now I don't, because I don't have enough. But when I have glimmer now, a fleet. I know to buy ships, yeah. They're gonna be the fucking pyramids are gonna show up, and fucking <laughs> Zavala is gonna be like, "Where are all the fucking ships at?" And that is gonna be like, "They're in the my same fucking one. Swiss bank That's right. account." <laughs> uh, I'm leveraging my my ships for a mortgage on my house. Yeah, uh, I played a bit of Returnal. I put some time into Returnal. I played a bit last week. Put a bunch of time in this week. Um, it's broken it was it might be fixed now it was exceptionally broken when i was playing they patched the game which introduced a save erasing bug which of course immediately erased my save because i run so good apparently and uh it just those it, are the good patches yeah it was it was having so many issues which colors my opinion of the game a little bit i guess uh, i i i am ready to formulate an opinion i think this is a fine video game that is maybe not worth seventy dollars or ninety here in Canada. It's maybe not a a full price plus ten game. If this wasn't a PS5 exclusive, I feel like people would be receiving this game pretty differently. Mm -hmm. Uh so now that everything's working, or or assuming everything is working, also these patch notes always end with um remember to turn off auto update if you want to save your runs which is really, really, really fucked. I'm offended you would ask. Yes, they, they actually don't put that on their website. Housemark does not put that on their website. It's only on social media. They, any anywhere kind of, I mean, social media is kind of official, but anywhere quote-unquote official, they, for some reason, who knows why, because it is fucking nonsense, they don't post this like, you have to go in and turn auto-update off. Yeah, we know it's the only game you've ever had to do this for any system... Yeah, we know maybe shouldn't be like this, but any anyways, it's. I'm trying to think of like a a similar thing where the devs would be like, oh, actually, you gotta go into your system and uh, yeah, this game doesn't run at 4K. You're gonna have to turn this one down to 1080p. Just remember to go in and, and play 1080p. It seems to work better if you turn the PlayStation upside down. Yeah, maybe maybe you should fix it instead of telling us to turn off auto update because before they told you to turn off auto update. They, right in the beginning of Returnal, it's like, by the way, if you want to save your runs, use the rest mode. They build it like it's a feature. Hey, you can save runs. Use the rest mode. It's it's actually the opposite. It's a feature missing. 
but I guess right. they're they're spinning it as best they can. Yes, they're like, thank God this console has a rest mode mm-hmm. because we fucking did not design this mm-hmm. so without it in mind. Playing Returnal, uh, if if you're going the distance, the runs are. I've had runs. Uh, my longest was about four and a half hours, and it ended Christ. pretty suddenly. Like I could have kept going. I was only at three of, I think six biomes, maybe. I think I've heard at least six biomes. So when your runs are going, they're like five, six. Who knows? Maybe maybe seven, eight hours if you're gonna do the full thing. If you're if you're going the distance, and used rest mode, even though I was like, no, I don't know about this. And go Apparently back I don't to, have to eight straight hours right now, yep. so I better use rest mode. It was exactly one of those. It was like I had played so long. I'm like, man, I just I do not want to lose this run, but it is five in the morning or whatever. And mm-hmm. yep, put into rest mode, came back the next day, and it hits you with a hot message. Hey, we updated your game and had to close it. Yep. And just immediate like from there, my experience with Returnal just pew off the fucking cliff. The next day they patched it, it erased my save. And do I want to go in there again and, and like, I don't want to put another 10 hours in and unlock all those items and stuff and, and redo the first few loops of the, like, uh, I'm not going to go back and put the time in, I don't think. Uh, when it's working, it is a fluid, it's, it's, it has tight controls, but doesn't require you to be particularly tight or, or specific, it seems like. But it is a, it is a fine third person bullet hell shooter. With roguelite elements, I don't think the the variance between runs doesn't seem doesn't seem very big in something like a a Binding of Isaac, where it's like, wow, I got these random uh, things that affect my abilities, and I guess I'm playing this crazy thing now because look how all the I just broke the game. Yeah, look I how the items came thing down. This thing. In in Returnal, there seemed like there are far fewer kind of random keywords for them to change, and by an hour or two in the game, like, you've seen every... You maybe haven't seen every permutation, but you've seen the component parts. You're like, oh, yes, okay, things can attach or detach. I can gain or lose health. Uh, fall damage or no fall damage is one. And throughout a run, like, your, your runs are always... You find your weapon that you like, and you you try to get upgrades that obviously increase your health and it, it's there's no real you're not like looking for a build it doesn't feel like it's not like well i'm gonna take this disadvantage to get this weird perk because i think it's gonna synergize nice with these things you just get your guns you try to get as much health as you can hopefully you have some kind of an ability that heals you and then you just you you play the bullet hell part very well you learn when to jump you learn animations of oh this he's gonna do a wave i gotta jump over this one all right it feels fine. Yeah, that was that was I think as someone who has not played it but watched a lot of it trying to decide if I was going to buy it. Uh that is where it lost me before even the rest mode and the uh game deleting bugs that they introduced. Uh it was watching someone do numerous runs and being like this is not different enough every run. Um for me to want to spend $90 on it. As someone yeah. who's still riding the Hades high a little bit where it was like you're specifically looking for like a tree of abilities just for random chances to unlock super abilities later in the game. And I was just so dialed into that stuff. Watching this all happen was just kind of like, it looks great. Yeah. Uh, and it even looks fun and to even, play. Even then, like it does look good, but there is a, there just isn't very much content. You've, you've seen every enemy in the first hour. You've seen, once you see the biomes, you've seen them. They're, they're not, particularly interesting once you've gone through them once like it does not it does not feel like there is 90 dollars worth of stuff in this game not at all and and I'll put it on the later list yeah wait wait for them to add a save mode and like this game has huge will be on sale big time energy like give it give it give it i would be shocked if this isn't free on psn plus or whatever their game pass equivalent they're going to work on is this Snaps for psn plus this is a game that i think you give to people more than well obviously not because they're charging for it but yeah it's i i i wouldn't recommend it for the full price give it to me for 40 and then charge me 40 more for eight more biomes down the road sure that would be that would it feels like a 40 dollar game mm-hmm. uh i'll keep going what else i actually i think that's maybe all i've done just destiny grinding getting ready Fuck. i was bummed I'm, i was bummed like, when returnal was not doing it for me <laughs> so you went back to <laughs> the comfort that you yeah. know in just Destiny. a little deeper. It's just because it is on the PS5 and and there's a, don't get me wrong, there's a whole ton of people who are 
shitheads. Like, because it's on the PS5, the only reason people talking about it. That's not quite what I'm saying, but at the same time, that's kind of almost exactly what I'm saying. If this game came it's out for probably... full price on Xbox and and everything, I think people would be mad. I think I would be mad. Like this is not a full price game. What the fuck? But it's got you know controller. The controller stuff feels good, so it convinces you it is. That controller is just pleasant to hold. Yeah. That is a big plus in all PlayStation games. Yeah, feeling the rain like on your on your controller when you walk outside is real dope. The first time you're like, "Wow, this is a ninety dollar game! Oh my god, it's amazing!" And once that novelty wears off, it's like, oh, "Okay." Brenda, what you been up to? Oh, you know, a bit, um, bit of this, I bit played, of that. Yeah, I uh, video game wise, I played Pokemon Snap, uh, the new. Pokemon the Snap. new Pokemon Snap is yeah. the full title of that game. The new. Pokemon I think it might Snap? just be new Pokemon Snap, but that is the new Pokemon game. Snap TM. You're right. Yeah. Um, it's a shame uh, Warren isn't here because he has played far more of it and is far uh, more deep into it uh, level wise than I am. But I can tell you the gist of things and some of the changes they've made from old Pokemon Snap. Uh, it uh is on the switch only. okay is uh, it if you couldn't guess can i can i ask questions maybe it would be a yes uh, I, yes sure okay. are you on the rails you're on the rails okay you're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna go down the list we're gonna check a lot of boxes that are the exact same as the original pokemon okay so you're Snap. you're you're throwing presumably different objects at pokemon yep. to get different reactions and, and luring them Literally places the first, and... first one you get is a fucking apple Look yeah there. and then the pester yep. ball yeah, I haven't got that yet, but that might be there. Uh, how is the... How is Oak's rating of photos, I've heard, is maybe a little... Or, or not Oak, but the professor's rating yes, of photos, I've heard is a little professor. bit um, weird in Yeah, this it one. is different. I think... So, first of all, I think the... Uh, they do some better work with the size stuff in that... There was there, there was a lot of times in the original Pokemon game where I'd get a really big picture of something, but it was just its face. Yeah, literally filling just, the entire screen. Yeah, and I would be like, wow, that's fucking dope. Good job. But it was like just a picture of like nothing but this yeah. giant thing. A bad this photo, is a little bit, but the game yeah. thought it wasn't. Yeah, they're like, yeah, that is... That's it's huge! Buzz, or that uh, Electrode's face fills up the entire screen. Wonderful! Um, but uh, this is a little bit better about like, no, we want to see the whole fucking thing. Um, we want to see the whole Pokemon. Uh, they're better about um, like poses and stuff like the facing towards you uh, stuff is a little more. And when I don't, when I say better, I don't mean that it's easier. I just mean, it's like, I can, like, I feel like I'm nodding along with him scoring me a lot more than I did in the original Pokemon. I've had a lot, a lot less moments where I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? I am a cameraman. I know better than you. Yeah, come on, Oak. Um, some of the not goods, though, uh, the biggest not good is that uh, you, are, you are putting the cursor on Pokemon and pulling the trigger, and it is uh, putting a, I mean, it is like you are taking a picture of that Pokemon. So if you are taking a picture of a Pokemon and you put the little dot right beside him and like a fucking uh, like bird or some shit mm. flies behind him and you get that picture of that bird really small in the background with the really big guy in the, the, the foreground that you're clearly trying to take a picture of, it will just not let you submit that photo as oh, the thing it, you were trying it to thinks take it's a picture, picture of, of a bird, you, not of the yeah. Pokemon or whatever. Right. And I feel like even in, I mean, this can't be true because why would the, why would the tech get worse? But I feel like in N64, I don't remember running into that problem. It uh, it didn't I used to... Know. That was the thing I heard specifically about new Pokemon Snap, is it didn't used to, like, tag the whole photo like it does now, which sounds oh, like okay, they run into, like, it. weird... I think it used to just... Maybe... It, it, Oak kind of just used to take his best guess, I think, because you could have, like, a bunch of Pokemon in a picture. Like, what a great picture of... Look around the frame. Uh, yeah. Pikachu, or whatever. Yeah. So I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, it's not very good. It doesn't burn me often, but it burns me sometimes very, like, sometimes you finally get that perfect picture with the thing you were trying to line up and, like, you were throwing the balls to get the guy in the right place, and you're like, yes, bang, nailed it. And then it's like, that's Zubat's wing behind that thing you were trying to take a picture of. Yeah. 
It's too small that. and I can't see it. 200 points. <laughs> Come on, Professor Neckbeard. Yeah. Anyway, um, another... Uh, some of the big changes they made. Now for every Pokemon, you are, you are getting a score, which is the, val- the quality of the picture. But for each Pokemon, you are also trying to get a one-star picture, a two-star picture, a three-star picture, and a four-star picture. Uh, what are the, the stars, stars are based on what the Pokemon is doing. So if you just, if there's a Pokemon just chilling, like a villain, one star. Uh, one star. If you got them uh, eating the apple when, or, or posing because you use the little fucking, there's basically the uh, equivalent of a baby rattle for the people trying to take pictures of the babies hmm. uh, where it's a scanner. And not only does it scan for like kind of secrets around the map or information, uh, but whenever you pop it, a lot of Pokemon will like look at it and be like, what the fuck was that? And that's kind of how you can get them to face you. Um, so if you get them like posing or eating an apple, then it's a two star uh, picture. I'm not 100% positive on the three and four because I'm just starting to unlock them, but it seems like maybe three is them using a, like a, a move, like an ability. And then four maybe has something to do with i'm not sure i'm not sure what four is maybe it's something like you have to kind of go through like a yeah like a puzzle you know how the sometimes there was puzzles to unlock new levels it seems like there's puzzles in this to get the perfect pokemon picture um, was it to unlock new levels it was to it was like to get different pokemon out or something there was i think there was both i remember like hatching hatching the bird eggs were usually little puzzles yeah get magikarp in the you had to knock magikarp down the canyon he turned to gyarados at the very end Right. But then there was also the ones where it's like throw the apple at the electrode to make them blow up the wall. So oh, yeah. Yeah. Stuff like that. So, oh, yeah. Uh, so that's one of the big changes. And then there's also when you get access to a new area, you're also leveling up the area. And as you level up the area, the Pokemon seem to kind of come out and be more uh, like uh, on the beaten path. Mm. Uh, like instead of the bison, po- I don't know all their names, but instead of the bison Pokemon being way on the horizon, once you've leveled up the level by getting enough points, then all of a sudden there's a couple like crossing the path in front of you that you can oh, take I pictures see. of. Yeah, so I think that's how they kind of uh encourage you to keep going back to the same level because you're you're being fed better picture opportunities. Maybe um, some like I wonder if there's any of the puzzle things yeah, maybe probably, maybe shift with exactly those exactly what i think like you can't get the four star picture of this pokemon until you get to the last the most leveled up phase of the level and then do these other things like it seems like that's kind of how this game is built uh and there's day and nighttime versions of the maps too and they have different uh pokemon that come out and do different things so a lot more replayability per level whereas the n64 version was very much um you're doing the same thing every single time, just trying to get the timing right or the timing a little bit better. Uh, this is um, a lot more level up your level, get better opportunities, take better pictures, uh, vice versa. That's kind of the loop. How does it run? Uh, I've only played it handheld, and it runs like most handheld Switch games, uh, which is uh, good most of the time, not good sometimes. Hmm. <laughs> Let me see if I can get a quick bing here for new Pokemon Snap performance. A bin. I'm always curious because Switch games don't run well. On the handheld. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even even like things don't run well on the Switch in in dock mode, and and they don't look great on a 4K TV. I find at 1080p, the Switch right. doesn't so look great on a 4K TV. No. Uh, I don't see anybody complaining about it, so. It, it's yeah, probably fine. No, I don't like it's it's not like when Breath of the Wild came out. Yeah. There's no obvious like ooh. Well that was the Wii U actually. Yeah, that was just with the Wii U. Yeah, I think cool. it ran fine on Switch. Uh Pokemon Snap. New Pokemon Snap. They maybe are introducing I just got to like a story beat, uh, where they are maybe introducing like a Gary type rival. Is it I hope Phil? that's what he's Phil. I can't remember his name, but he has like the spiky hair that I associate with fucking dicks and cartoons. Mm, yeah, Vegeta so, hair. Yeah, it is Phil. Yeah. Well, there is a Phil, and he's got spiky hair. Yeah, that's probably Phil. He might be my friend. I'm not sure. It feels like they're, you know what? While we're getting on the topic, it feels like they're afraid to be like the the, the rival you really hate. I fucking hated Gary. Yeah, Gary was a piece was of shit. Up. Now it just seems like they're like friendly rival. Well. You got me this oh, time. We make back. each other better. Yeah. We'll Fuck probably... that. 
yeah, back in know, my day. I, want you guys. Yeah, I, was, like, I was I was hoping I was hoping your Pokemon died in the battle. I was yeah. like, fuck you. We were I Pikachu was in the fucking corner with me in the spit bucket, and I'm like, you don't stop punching. Yeah. You see the light go out. You don't stop punching. Just cheering my Pikachu on. Hey, come on, kid. Keep your, keep your paws up. This Gary's cut, just cut like, man. throw in the towel. <laughs> He's already He's dead. He's dying. And then Pikachu's like, if he dies, he dies. Yeah. <laughs> one, one big slice below the eye to let it all out. Man, our, our Pokemon boxing movie is going to be so dope. Yeah, it's just Rocky Four with Pokemon. Yeah. yeah, with Pokemon. <laughs> we gotta beat the Russian Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, any other video games anybody been playing wants to bring up here? No, but I can tell you right now, uh, on my Xbox, fully installed and ready for me to press start is Resident Evil Village. So oh, I think it's a mass erect. Yes, a mass erect on the horizon as well. I'm uh, curious to see what you think of Village. I've heard uh, some not not bad things, just different. Mixed, yes. Yeah. I, I've heard it's Mixed quite reviews. a different game than Seven, yeah. and I fucking love Seven. Still, I'm still holding my breath for the uh, next gen remaster of Seven. When I lie to myself and say I'll probably play it through all the way, mm-hmm. <laughs> gotta get past that garage fight. <sighs> Fuck that garage fight. How about that? <laughs> Let's uh, take a quick break. Then we'll come back and do some news. See you on the other side of this musical break. One day we'll be back in the studio. Where the bandwidth is infinite. Bandwidth in real life across the room is is very high. Very high throughput. Mm-hmm. Probably on. We're going to have fiber in the new place, too. It's going to be dope. Can't wait. Chapter uh, 2. Talking Reckless Chapter 2. That's starts. right. HD. Redesign the website, Matt. Promise the, a lot of things uh, you can't deliver. I was listening to another podcast I listened to. They were talking about the... Uh, in workplaces, like the the constant battle against entropy in in like any team based work environment, how every mm-hmm. you know every three or four years in a restaurant or whatever, you just got to really like shake everything up and and redo your systems, whatnot. That's uh, we we have gone through that here. We just rename the podcast every time it happens. Mm-hmm. You think it's you think it's about time? About time for a shake up? Yeah, I don't think we need a rename. But no. Well, I think once if you were. Sorry, that was that was a well. Like I was gonna be like, well, maybe we should. Have been. That was not. That was the wrong inflection on well. Oh, like, um, well. When the pandemic we, is over, uh, let's maybe look about getting some some new blood in, some fresh faces, perhaps. Once we can all what? be back in in a studio together. What do I got for news this week? Maybe we can fire Andy. Yeah. Fucking guy. Let's talk about Bill C10 briefly here, which is a uh, Canadian thing. Oh mercy! Let me let me get the long and the short of it here. Uh, Bill C10 is a uh, Canadian. It will be an, an an amendment to the Broadcasting Act, and the long and the short of it is that CRTC standards, Canadian broadcast standards, which some of which are are compared to American standards are like ridiculous. Thirty. 6% of content needs to be Canadian produced in, in such and such and a whole 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 bunch of regulatory requirements what you can play who gets royalties how long you can play it for how many uh, public service things you need to do per paid ads yada 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 and Bill C-10 basically is the way it's being presented is it wants to bring broadcast standards to internet content, to to internet creators, and and kind of everything that goes along with that. Um, Adoring fans. Yeah, it, and like Rupees. the the reason I'm not really giving you any hard fast facts on what that means is because there aren't any. The minister in charge of this bill has got out and said it will not they they said verbatim that the bill will not target or affect individual content creators. And then they've came out I don't know when this was uh, 5 days ago and have said oh it will affect content creators but only those with a quote significant following or something something social media presence which in in legal speak they can just make up a metric and say, ah, well, you know, you have a hundred followers, so you're technically a content creator now under our CRTC 
regulations. No word as to how that affects the backlog of content. Is that only stuff going forward? Uh, one of the one of the things in here as to how they're going to decide uh, who this affects is: Do they present themselves as a quote broadcaster? What does that mean? Like, if I'm on a middle of a street intersection yelling my rhetoric to the world like that lovely motorcycle that drove past am i a broadcaster is that motorcycle a broadcaster now because it went through a microphone into a podcast that that i get revenue from like it's there's no hard fast rules and they are changing the story behind it it seems every day and what bill c10 really is is a way for the government to directly control what content you see on everything from social media to Facebook to advertisements to YouTube, uh, everywhere that you get content, assuming you're a Canadian citizen, uh, or, or not a citizen, but in Canada. Um, they also... They, they control the number and, and uh, degree of stuff you see, but they also put their own programming forward as well. So not, not only do they control what you see, in, in the sense that they say yes or no, you can or cannot view this, they also have their own content that they are pushing on you that obviously is not subject to the bill. And it is, it is quite literally a way for Ottawa to be like, we think that you should be looking at this on social media, not this. Which is straight out of Orwell's 1984. That is 1,000% the government being like, we don't think you should be reading these radical free words here. Mm -hmm. It's really fucked. And because the older generation, because because boomers have no fucking sense of the internet or technology or what any of it means. What's happening here? My mic seems to be clipping or something. Uh, this, this is a very real chance. There we go. This is a very real chance of going through. As it is. The, the people making these laws, and this is not Again, this is not going to knock anybody's socks off. The people making these laws have no fucking idea how to use the technology that they affect, how the technology is utilized, what the space looks like. I bet they don't even know what a lot of these words mean. Like, I bet they don't this even... This rings very similar to uh, when they sent the folks in to figure out the loot boxes. <laughs> and people were just, like, throwing out words like uh, cosmetic... Uh, Synergies. And, yeah, and everyone's just like, could we not get someone who's played a video game to go to court for this? Yeah, it's it's wild. It is, it is truly insane. This is the this is this is the battle for net neutrality. This is this is the mm. Canadian version of well, I mean, we have our own net neutrality battle, but this is another facet of it. A f another front. Yeah, and if, if listen, if you are a person who uses the internet in any capacity, if you have ever you're hearing this, so you do, if you have ever watched or created any of your own content and that means if you have ever at any point live streamed your image or your voice or who knows, who knows what it could mean, like you you were you were in a stream of mine one time or something and that went on to make money and, and because of these weird CRTC regulations now we're all being dmca targeted or whatever who knows i have to go yeah it's it's fucked it's really <laughs> fucked it, it very really it it could if this bill passes as it's written it could very really be the end of not only talking reckless every single amateur podcast and youtube stream and everything mm, yeah, it, it, I mean, it would just end because it wouldn't it wouldn't be worth the potential legal action a huge part of it too as well is just like it's there's it there's no way that like b the big media companies in Canada aren't also attached and have a mouth to the ears of everyone in government on how this thing should be built because they want to help level the playing field between their traditional media and way of doing things that a lot of it still needs to evolve and they're just choosing not to invest in trying to evolve it they want to try to instead choke out everyone else who is you know stealing audience with online content and taking away from potential revenue that they could be making off of listenership and advertising and all that stuff and just try to pull more of that back into their field because like you said it, they'll have the power to just shut stuff down if it becomes too big right and yeah. if somebody's not complying with what they say is the proper broadcast standard in canada which they're keeping it so vague they could really just make up stuff along the way if anybody becomes a real threat 
Um, and then that's good for the big companies as well, too, because they don't have to worry about those threats then. You yeah. Know? And I think you hit the nail right on the head. Like, like you say, instead of trying to change or or accommodate the system to this rapidly changing world we have, they are just hammering the the new way that things are changing, forcing it to fit into this old antiquated set of rules that has not made it has not made sense for years. There's... Well, the, the the rules themselves, like the CRTC rules, uh, when it comes to you know, especially things like our like the biggest thing for me would be uh, Canadian content on radio. They're fucking super outdated. Mm -hmm. Like we play the tragically yeah. hip on our station every two hours because we have to fill a CanCon requirement that we're being told is there in order to promote new artists. We're not do playing new artists. We're playing Our Lady Peace and Tragically Hip yeah. over and over again to fucking Song. fill that bill Song because nobody bipolar. wants to listen to the new artists. Like, yeah, exactly, right? Like that's, that's we're that's just classic. spinning. We're spinning the same old stuff. You're telling us that it's in place because you want us playing the Canadian content. Well, unfortunately, if the Canadian content isn't good and the Internet decides it isn't good because everybody can put their stuff out there nowadays and it's becoming easier and easier to get your stuff found if you're actually making good stuff. Like we don't need these rules anymore. Like that's we shouldn't be encouraging people to like like I, I can't I can't explain it, but it just. It, it, it's not it's not encouraging people to be better it's not encouraging these companies to make better stuff it's not encouraging artists to make better content it's just a get out of jail free card so that they can keep their revenues up and never have to invest in evolving yeah i agree a thousand percent the c well the king of canada is above the laws <laughs> Yeah, and don't get me wrong. I love the hip. I love our lead piece. Like, I love those bands and stuff. But, like, you know, even with this bill, C10, that's the whole thing they're telling people is they're saying, oh, well, the, you know, the internet, we need to be able to promote more Canadian content yes. and Canadian artists. And we want to make sure that, you know, Canadian streamers and stuff like that are getting promoted. Like, no, that's not what this is about, you fuckwads. Like, get out of here, you dipshits. We're not falling for that. Because you've been saying that for years towards traditional media, and it hasn't been working. It hasn't been working in the traditional sense why would you move it into the evolved sense no that's not your intention with it your intention with it is to control people that you see as a threat to your already existing ancient products a thousand percent couldn't have said it better myself andrew i feel like we should like wheel you into the federal court uh as exhibit a and you like when you come into the court, you're all like sealed up, but you can just hear this fucking faint nattering on inside the box. And we start we start taking we start like undoing seals. The yeah. steam is coming yeah. out and it gets louder and louder. <laughs> and he just I'm steps like, out mid sentence. All keeps I'm going. saying is I don't know why these rules. And it just keeps going until he goes back into the thing at the end. <laughs> I'd be like uh, it, it'd be like um, Bucky in Civil War when they got him in that big uh, container or whatever, oh, all yeah. strapped up in the chair. <laughs> That'd be what they wheel me in there. <laughs> Yeah. bulletproof glass i'm just punching the glass trying to get out it's cracking a little bit each these time. rules make we're no like, sense we're, we're putting like the hannibal lecter like face cover on and you're just like jaw is like snapping it with the pure ferocity of its movement uh anyways no yeah i'm pretty passionate about that I, i've read into it a lot and it just as someone who works in the industry it disappoints me because i'm someone who is you know actively trying to fight to find ways to evolve it and when i hear about you know and and I mean, hopefully nobody from Bell hears me talk like this. But when I hear about, you know, like a company, uh, I'm big, here. yeah, I know you are here, Brando, but you're cool. Um, when a big <laughs> company I work for, when this is the direction they're putting their energy and assets into, it's like, what the fuck am I waking up for every day? Then yeah. why am I going to work and busting my ass off trying to find new innovative ways to create stuff and get these brands out there when you're just going to try to shit on everything that everyone else is doing on their own? That's very creative and innovative. And also the stuff that I'm trying to do as well. Yeah, you you, Andrew, have put things on the Internet. You would probably fall under the content creator with your your animations on YouTube. Well, and uh, like the thing for me right now is TikTok. That's where I'm putting a lot of my efforts into. Like, how is that going to work, right? Like, so it's arbitrary. Just, if you, you have know, a significant following, who knows? Who knows? Hope, hopefully, we get some real lawmakers in, and I don't know. We got to blow up Parliament or something. Guy Fox was whoa, right. Whoa. We just all need to become libertarians. Guy Fox was right, is all I'm saying. Ben Ben has a libertarian. I'm like a. I'm like a. a What's an even? I'm like a neo libertarian. I'm. Is that more? I think that'd be more. Wouldn't yeah, it? I'm super libertarian. 
I'm so you libertarian. I'm all the way back. I'm like bordering on on conservativeness again. Yeah, that's 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 good. You gotta be careful with that. <laughs> hmm, where should we go in the old news doc here? Let's see. Nintendo very quietly put out a game called Garage Game Builder. You guys see this? That just made me want to play Mario Maker. Yeah, more. the yeah, as soon as you said that, yeah. The 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 game itself looks like a a Mario Maker esque presentation for a very basic programming language. They show like uh, they they like uh, make a little game where it's like oh you gotta jump over the block to hit the block it'll kill you and they show um, like variables you're like oh player damage and dragging kind of uh, different sort of programming keywords that didn't make any sense to me but presumably things like the gravity and and jump height and things. Uh, it looked like a very, very basic... I mean, to me, it looked very basic, but some of the games they showed, like in Dreams, like when you see the things made with Dreams, you're like, wow, this doesn't look possible with these tools. This is amazing. Uh, where they showed, um, just like, they go through their, their very quick little sort of montage of little games they've built, and they've got, like, it looks like a third-person fighting game and, like, a kart racer and all sorts of things in there that look kind of neat. That's fun. Yeah. They, like there's a part of this whole build your own game genre uh if dreams is on one end of the spectrum which was this just seems way too fucking hard for the people to do even though it's the tool set is amazing um maybe this at least will be a little more accessible and i feel like accessibility is the number one thing you need to achieve when you want people to make really cool games it's like even uh the sackboy game little big planet um those tools were incredibly easy to use and not overcomplicated. And some of my favorite shit came out of Little Big Planet at the time. It's since been blown away by better tool sets. But I remember playing like a Bioshock game that they made in fucking Little Big Planet. And I'm like, well, this is weirdly sick. Um, so I wanted Dreams to be really cool. And I just think that I, it felt like the cross section of people that would use Dreams. But wouldn't like it felt like when you got up to dreams, you're probably just gonna go use yeah, by, a tool set and make a make a game. By that point, you're just gonna make it in Unity and, and sell it on Steam right. or something. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I just felt like the the who they were trying to target in Dreams was there were no that person almost didn't exist. Dreams it was too complicated they... for the me's and it was not complicated enough for the thems. It seems like it uh, has sort of a, and, and this game might have it too, a discoverability issue as well, where like, Dreams has a demo where I think you can just play anything that's in Dreams, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, even that is apparently not enough to, to get those things out in front of people. So I wonder. I just haven't seen anything from Dreams in it's forever. It's out. It's like, out there. Like you, you, yeah. you would have to go download the thing and and see some of these levels. And be like, yeah, this is really cool. I don't know who's gonna play this like racing game in Dreams, but someone should. And it's made not it. catching. Like yeah. Dreams is not like like you're, I'm not going on YouTube and seeing fucking people playing the Dreams levels. Yeah. Well, and that's that's what I mean with the discoverability issue. I wonder, mm. like, how do you... You need people to be playing these levels. It's it's fun to make something, but if nobody plays it or if nobody sees the thing you made, then what's the point? Like, Super Mario Maker, making levels is fun, but only to the end that I want my friends to play them and be like, you, what is this? Right. And I don't, like, the Super Mario Maker tool set was incredibly easy to use. I don't yeah. know how this will... This looks simple. I don't know if it is simple. Um... But that was the thing with Mario is I could sit down for five minutes and make something fun and stupid, uh, or I could sit down for three hours and make something that I thought was great. And well, the nice thing with Mario Maker as well is you can put all that content in front of anybody playing Mario Maker and a bad Mario level, eh, it's a bad Mario level, but you're still you're still playing Mario. Yeah. It gets a lot harder when you have all these different things of like, well, this one's a shooter and this one is just kind of a weird painting game and right. someone made a little cart racer down here and like everything is sometimes you're going to get something where you're like, this game doesn't even work. This game doesn't even run. What the fuck is this nonsense? And then sometimes you would get something incredible. So I wonder. It's all... And, like, they didn't do a great job with Mario Maker with the curation and, and sharing levels and getting that stuff out in front of people. So I wouldn't... Uh, I maybe wouldn't hold my breath for Nintendo's online stuff to be great, but hopefully they figure that stuff out. E3? I'm at oh, 633 kilobytes per second, <laughs> and it started flashing CPU overload at me. 
Oh, good. Okay. I don't know yeah. what that means, but we better, we better hurry before it explodes. <laughs> uh, E3 2021 is going to be happening. A This is not in person, right? Hang on. Let me double check that. Surely. I'm, I'm like, yeah, digital experience. Uh, I do have some confirmations. Last week I said nobody was going to be there. That was apparently a gross lie. Here is uh, confirmed partners. And some of these have showcases confirmed, some just expected. But so far for E3 2021, we have Xbox, Nintendo, the Future Game Show, which I think is their... their that's not the PC Gaming Show, because that is right after, apparently. Uh, Square Enix, Ubisoft, T2? Is that... That must be Take-Two. Uh, Warner Brothers, Koch Media, Capcom, Activision, Bandai Namco. Sorry, was that Koch Media? Koch. 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 C-O-C-H. Koch Media. Oh, okay. What are they? I'm just going to type cock media into my browser here. That's my company. That's why I was alarmed when you said it, because I was like, oh shit, I have to go. Um, what have they published? They're a publisher. Oh, they own Deep Silver, apparently. Okay. Hmm. Uh, yes, there's your, there's your E3 2021 stuff. Great. Sure. It's happening. There will be a time Major in Steel. June when we, when all the video game publishers and developers talk about their new stuff. Surprise, surprise. That's all the news I have. Fuck the news. Fuck the news. Coming straight from the underground. Podcast at talkingreckless.com is an email address where you can write in uh, your underground, underground thoughts here. Or you can drop them on our Discord, which you can find just by going to talkingreckless.com. Click the old Discord button. See the old uh, question threads here. I think we're good. Looks like we have answered everything, solved it all. Uh, that's not true. Did I ever answer this question from... To, uh, hmm. I don't know what's, <laughs> I don't know what's happened here. I tell somebody asked me about Sekiro. Ah, oh, got it. Here's how it goes. Toby said, uh, this didn't go in the channel. See, this is why you got to put these in the podcast channel, because this didn't go in the channel. That's why we're having all these problems. I have all these systems set up. So I just want to step in here and say briefly that maybe one of the problems that reasons we don't get so many questions is because we're just fucking in the Discord answering questions yeah, all true. the time. It's but. true. Yeah. Join the Discord. If you want to chat, join uh, I, I will. When someone asks me a question in the Discord, I will sometimes put it in the podcast thing, which is exactly what happened here. Uh, Toby asks, how did you like Sekiro? Brando, you can answer this as well. How did you like Sekiro and what did you not like about it? Toby asks because they are a big From Software fan. They love Sekiro, but find the gameplay to be next to flawless. Uh, but for some reason, probably theme and replayability, it's compromised by, let me say, plot bears. <laughs> I will assume plot, be plot beats and cutscenes. Uh, it is their least favorite series. Sekiro. Mm -hmm. They love it, love the Oof. gameplay, find it to be flawless yeah. gameplay, but there's just some, there's something about it. Doesn't love samurai or, or doesn't love the story or the plot. It's their least favorite. What did you think about Sekiro in relation to the Grander From catalog? Are you asking me? Yeah. Oh, it's my favorite by a mile. Like, it's... I, it's the only one you I could finish. almost... It is, al it is the only one I've finished. I could almost go so far as to say <laughs> it's the only one I've liked. Uh, Strong words. And, I, and I've loved it. Like, it was... I don't know. I don't like. I don't think I've played deep enough into enough of them. I, that's not true. I really like that uh, uh, Demon Souls remake. Um, I was gonna say, when are we getting back to Demon Souls? I've been waiting for you. Um, I killed the yeah. spider. I killed the Tower Knight. I think. Yep, me too. Um, I think but I think two, that's the last thing two I did. bosses up. I'm on the gargoyle or the man eaters now. Yeah, I have not played that game probably since I said I had not played that game I'm in a week. It's never been a better time. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I love Sekiro. I don't think that i love it for the story and i don't think i play any of those games for the story i think i played them for exactly the part that you said was flawless which was the the combat mm -hmm. which i uh, you know the could, art. i could run i yeah no it's some, well, some really good art direction in sekiro late especially like there's it it's kind of a i mean you know me you've seen one feudal japan you've seen yeah, them all there's a lot of them um I don't even know if a feudal Japan is 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 right in yeah, that that's, setting. That's totally but, right. Yeah. Um, 
it does hit later on in some levels where you're like, it's like a whole different guy made oh, these levels. Oh, that big dragon. Fucking waterfall. It's like and, that yeah, huge that dragon. You're like big that dragon, tiny guy. The little monkey mist temple. Um, they go some places with that that is not so regular worldly that I think looks really cool. But I played that game because I could fight those guys uh, for hours and hours on end. Yeah. I loved the combat and that's why I played it. So honestly, if you're looking for the story, and everything, I can totally understand why you bounce off Sekiro, but I'm not an expert on the story of any of those games, because that's not why I come to them. I like... I definitely like the gameplay of Sekiro. I think I like Bloodborne a little more. I, for me, Bloodborne and Sekiro are right, right up there. They're, they're doing different things. They're doing... Not very different, but they, they're kind of taking mm. different avenues with their 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 combat and, and what they're asking, like, defensively versus offensively. And I think I lean to Bloodborne just because I... I I do like the story and the well, story is a, is a not the right word for it. Uh, I like the world. I like the lore, and uh, and and the like the eldritch gods and Cthulhu monsters and stuff. I I lean to a little bit more than feudal Japan. Mm-hmm. I don't know. As I'm thinking about, would I rather play Sekiro or Bloodborne? Man, Bloodborne. I, I really want to see it running at sixty. I bet if you could play Bloodborne at sixty frames a second, it would it would find something special that it doesn't have at thirty. Oh, I don't know. Andy, you ever gonna play uh, any of these any of these these from software games? I want to play Sekiro because that was the game that every time I talked about how sloppy the combat was in Jedi mm-hmm. Fallen Order, you guys are like, this is one that is fantastic because I wanted a hard game out of Jedi Fallen Order, and I th- I played that game on like the second hardest or whatever um but there's just like so many times in that where i was just like oh man that i shouldn't have died there like i know when i die because i suck and there were so many times in that game where i was like i didn't die there because i suck i died because this game fucking needs to be tightened up a little bit whereas uh, you say that sekiro is just like after replaying fallen order i realized what it is about that combat is to make it look like lightsaber fighting there's so many like flourishes and things you have to do between blocks and at the end of attacks and like (laughs) there's just so many long tails on the animations in fallen order that uh yeah, it really, it really suffers to the the combat suffers to make it look like Star Wars. More Star Wars, yeah. yeah. That, it, was, it is a game where like the good hard game did not exist. It felt like you could make that game hard, and it made that game not good. Yeah, uh, and you can play that game and think it was really good, but it was because you were playing it easy. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. Um, it was a good Star was Wars no game. Intersection. It's not a not a tremendous tight technical combat thing. Whereas Sekiro. Is. is the fucking intersection. Yes, it doesn't get much tighter than Sekiro. Sekiro is... Yeah. The reason I kind of don't lean towards replaying it is, in my memory, it's harrowing. Because you... Yes. In, in, like, in Bloodborne... Never go back. <laughs> yeah, you have a little bit of, like... A little bit of safety. You can back off. You can you can mm-hmm. roll and be invincible <laughs> if you need to. In Sekiro, yeah. it's like, go, 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 go. They are attacking all the time, and if you aren't parrying those attacks, you're dead. You're dying. Yep. You just knew it was over yep. at a point. Like in Sekiro, you're like, I didn't know. Yeah, I'm like, done. I'm it's going to die. It's in a way that you're just like, ah, ja, ah, oh, I can't, like, you can't keep up. Whereas in Bloodborne, if, if it gets overwhelming, you can get the fuck out of there. Mm-hmm. In Sekiro. But then in Sekiro, sometimes luck. you do keep up and it's. Oh, yeah. No, oh, when it, when it's it hits, magical. you can't. It's, sometimes the fight's over and you're just like, oh, my God, is it the. I, oh, my God, I did it. Oh, my God, I did yeah. it. And just like, like get off your my mind. bed and power walk in circles around my apartment for a while. Oh. There's no better feeling. No. Andy, you should play Sekiro. Yeah. Don't you still have that PlayStation? Yep. I do. I have a PC too, though. Is it on PSN Plus? I'm seeing if it... It's got to be free somewhere. I wonder. Because I can I get it on PC too. Game of the year. Yeah, if you, if you ever get a chance to pick it, it up runs on, fucking, the, on the like, cheap seas, it, it's very Get it on it. whatever you want, obviously, but it runs flawlessly on the PlayStation 2. So. Yeah. PlayStation 4 probably runs like shit on the PlayStation, PlayStation 2. PlayStation as well. Yeah. Uh, podcast talkingrocks.com an email address or join us on the discord where we have all sorts of things going on film clubs what are we watching this week is comedy week let's see uh, we're voting on comedy week yep. so nomination for comedy week still get uh, noms in. the jerk super bad Shaun of the dead airplane out cold I don't know what out cold is uh, caddyshack dumb and dumber the naked gun yeah blazing saddles planes trains and automobiles damn there's, there's a lot of what's good what's in the lead yeah, that's a good lead? list. Uh, let's see. I've seen Caddyshack within the last, I think, month, and I will fucking watch me some Caddyshack. There's a lot of Leslie Nielsen on that 
on that list. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, if I, I watch, is the poll actually? I watched Caddyshack a couple months ago. I'd watch oh, that again. Maybe now, the poll's though. not open yet. You're right. Yeah, I think it's just. I think we're still getting uh, yeah, suggestions we're just a in for now. Yeah. yeah. No. Is Hot Fuzz not on there. Uh, we watched Hot Fuzz on on one of our movie nights. Was why they they chose Shaun of the Dead. Nah, good call. Um. Also, we did on Saturday. Um. Oh, what's that one stop, called for? Was it stop motion? No, no, we're uh, we're doing stop motion next weekend. Fuck, I can't remember. I still watch it. Something about wind. Thomas Something says, about wind. Ghibli. The wind rises. The wind rises. Thank you. That must be I'm an anime. I'm not a Ghibli. I've never, I'm not a I've never Ghibli heard of that one. aficionado. Neither am I. Let's see. Okay, there's a lady in a garden here. It looks like she's painting. Man in an airplane. This looks wholesome. This looks very wholesome. I don't see any, like, death gods like Totoro or anything unsettling. Look at this pig! Um, Porco Rosso! Is that his name? There's a pig flying a plane! Hang on, Porco Rosso. Okay, you work on that, and uh, on sa this coming Saturday, we are doing Wallace and Gromit uh, for stop motion. Uh, the, the Curse of the Were-Rabbit. Is it the Were-Rabbit? Oh. <laughs> What's Hell of a film. Yeah. It's a good film. Yeah, it's a good one. The, I'm going to have to get in on that. Wallace and Gromit and the something pants. What's the pants one? Oh, yeah. The big... The, They're the, like robot uh, this pants. This is not the name, but it was like the big... Yeah, yeah. the giant pants. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so good. There are so many of those stop motion uh, nominations that are like my favorite films of all time. Like Chicken Little mm -hmm. is so good. Oh, so many of those. Chicken Little or Chicken Run? Uh, uh, chicken, chicken Run. Chicken Run. Yeah. Sorry. Chicken Run. Yeah. Yeah. Chickens go in. Pies come out. <laughs> the dog. Oh, it's a great film. Come, uh, come join us for some movie nights over on the Discord. Yeah, you you do not need to own those films. We we have a a way of of getting them to you. Come and come and see what's up. Over beam on, them right into your dome. That's right. Over on that's right. We're like streaming the on Riddler's, Beam. Uh, Microsoft Beam. Brain Beam from uh, Batman Forever. That's Let's a cut. Suck up all the knowledge. Yeah. He's, he's reading Robin's mind. He wants to one day be with a real life girl. Yeah. That's about all I remember Jim from Gary, that movie. Just cooking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> podcast. I right see com. without. The final riddle was I see. This is Batman saying I see without seeing. To me, darkness is as clear as daylight. And the Riddler's like, you're as blind as a bat. And Batman says, exactly. And throws a fucking batarang at his big machine. And it was one of the worst endings to any movie I had ever seen. That's not... And I love that movie. Yeah, that's that's pretty par for the course, I feel. I feel that back in the day, that Kilmer. was like standing up in the theaters. Woo! Uh, that's not got bad. Him. That's not bad. We're in hockey pads. That's just the 90 version of hockey pads. No. Yeah. Uh, what else I got to tell you about the Patreon? You can go find the world's premier anime podcast over at our Patreon, patreon.com slash podcasts, or you can find it at uh, weebs.ca. We have an anime poll up there as well for what we should watch for the uh, next season of World of Weebs. Go get your vote in over there. We just finished up uh, Cowboy Bebop, which was excellent. Excellent. Andrew, you if should you watch, watch the... Cowboy Bebop because there's a character. The I am... Um, um, uh, all right. There's a character named Andy that is very good. It is the Mr. Satan of <laughs> Cowboy Bebop. It's Cowboy Andy, who is fucking Don't excellent. Oversell. Oh, I mean, no one can ever be Mr. Satan, but <laughs> it's true. Yeah, you're setting the bar pretty high there. Yeah. But go watch the Cowboy. Just if you watch one episode, just watch the Cowboy Andy episode. <laughs> uh, it's very good. Even on the podcast, I think I say, "Man, Cowboy Andy modeled after real Andy. This is incredible." Mm -hmm. I think that'll do it. Andrew Captain. That oh, was a uh, podcast. Uh, yeah, you can also find Tron, the longer version of the podcast. We talked about Bad Batch. Some Star Wars talk on Tron, if uh, you want to get that as well. There's also no ads when there are ads. So, uh, Thank you very much for listening. You at home. If you want to rate and review us, I think we're a five-star podcast. I hope you do too. Andrew Captain, thanks very much for being here. Cowboy Andy looks dashing as hell. He's very good. <laughs> Brandon Lynch, thank you very much for joining us, as always. You betcha. Uh, Warren Barris was was here, is is ready to play. Working. Yeah, he might here. still be here for all we know. Is this yeah. in the fucking? Yeah, he gets a thank ninja. you as well. He was he was on duty tonight, but we just couldn't couldn't get the internet to work for it. Uh, so thanks very much to Warren as well. And to you at home, thanks for listening or watching, however you view this podcast. Go and rate and review, and uh, we'll see you here next week on the next episode of the Talking Reckless Podcast. We'll see you then.